Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Kind of a rainy, misty day here at the lake, but still nice at the lake, right? <laughs> and uh, there's lots of little flies around. Man, oh man, the flies are bad today. But anyhow, uh, the project I was doing today was uh, kind of because it was raining. I thought, well, I'm going to do an indoor project. Uh, but it turned out that I had to do a bunch of work outdoors. And I didn't video any of it because it was kind of raining and I didn't want to put the camera out in the rain, you know, stuff like that. So I'm kind of halfway through the job, but we're going to take you over and show you what I did so far because there's a break in the weather right now. And the last part I have to do is inside the tractor shelter. So I'll show you that. Let's go check out what I've done so far though. Okay, around the back of the shop here, I've got uh, the lawn tractor shed. And uh, this summer, if you remember one of my videos, let me get around here so I'll show you. I put a soffit in up here, close in that soffit. And I used to have an extension cord coming out through there before the soffit was in, coming out through there. And just down the side of the building, I ran it, just ran it on grade over towards the tractor temporary shelter, right there, right? Well, with Fiona and all, uh, this kind of got you know, messed up a little bit with all the trees, you know, with all the destruction and trees in back here where I was running the cable. Yeah, it was a mess. Still is. So anyway, I'm just getting around to tidying this up now because I need to have electricity in my temporary shelter for the tractor for the winter time. But what I did was, because I put this soffit back in up here, I went inside the shelter and I drilled a hole in the wall down here and I ran the extension cord out through the wall. So what I did was I cut the end off the extension cord so I could fish it through that hole. And then I just sort of buried it under grade here. And this is not, you know, certainly not to code because it's just it's just the extension cord. It's an exterior grade extension cord, but I just have it under grade. And it runs over there on grade in behind the temporary shelter. That's a mess and I need to get at that too. That's another job that I like to get done before winter. Uh, and inside the shelter here, I hope you can see this. I have an outlet on the wall, so this is where I'm going to plug it in. There's the end of the cord. Uh, and this outlet is protected with a ground fault interrupter circuit uh, that's in the shop. I feel pretty good plugging my extension cord into this and running it over grade, because if anything were to happen, like a short circuit or something, it would trip the ground fault and it would be safe. With ground fault detectors, or at least the ones I have, uh, ground fault outlets, uh, you can wire them so that anything downstream from the outlet is protected by the ground fault. So that's what I did there. The ground fault is one of the first outlets in the circuit from the shop. And then I pulled that circuit out through here into this little uh, lawn garden tractor shed. So those outlets are protected. But anyway, enough about the technical stuff, right? <laughs> Who wants to hear that? That's just... <laughs> so anyway, along here behind the temporary shelter, I ran my extension cord just on grade, like I say. And there it is there, that yellow cable goes over here, sneaks in behind the tractor shelter and goes inside. So we're going to go inside now and show you what I'm up to there. But the lighting is terrible in there, so I apologize for that. But So what I've done is uh, uh, this panel that I put in here, I had an outlet, a switched outlet on it, if you can see that. Uh, and anyway, I just took this face board off the front here so I could get at the wire. So what I'm up to now is I'm just... Uh, taking this switched outlet apart so I can tie in my extension cord direct to the switch instead of through this black extension cord. So we're just taking this plug out the bottom here. So we're going to remove this extension cord that I have here. Boy, Nanny must have tightened that one. Yeah, we need to take the neutral off. And we need to take this switched leg off of here. Okay, so now this cable should be able to be pulled out of here. Like so, and then like so. And uh, <laughs> I know I'm cheap, but I'm leaving these tie wraps on here to see if I can fish the old extension cord in th underneath those. <laughs> you know, the tie wraps, what do they cost? About a third of a cent each. <laughs> So there's the extension cord pulled out. So we'll throw that over there, don't need that. But I'm not going to throw it out. Uh -uh. Alright, so here's the other one. See where I just cut it off there. So now we're going to fish that in through here. And then I'm just going to try this on the one tie rack. 
Oh yeah, put in the freezer. That should be enough. So this is going to be good, eh? I'm going to save myself three tie wraps in this job. Oh, oh baby! It doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the money I save in this job, but... <laughs> Okay, we'll take that over here. Then we're going to pass it up through the hole in my box that I have here. Alright, that should be enough. About six inches is about all you really need in an outlet box, I think. But I need to cut this insulation off of here. And this is the tricky part because I need to cut the insulation without cutting the wires. And this is not like Lumex, so. And then the ground wire, I always like to put the ground wire on first. Twist that up, put a little hook in the end of it. Put it on the ground terminal. Now we can skin back the neutral. This is not an ideal way to skin wires because this is a multi-conductor, multi-strand wire. And when you cut like that, like in fact, right there, if, if you can see that, uh, when I cut it with my knife, I cut one of the strands, eh? So that means this wire, although it was rated, I think, at 16, it's one strand less than 16 gauge right now. So that's why you shouldn't skin wires with a knife like that. But as long as you don't tell anybody, I'll be safe. Okay, now I want to put the neutral on the outlet. Okay, and the neutral goes on the white terminal, the elongated terminal, white terminal. And then on this side, it goes on the hot lead. Now it's going to go on the copper colored terminal, which is the shorter of the two terminals. And that's going to my switch. So now I put this wire on the switch. Like so. And that should do it. Now these uh, switches, if you see them, it's marked off or on. So I like to set them so that when the toggle is aimed down, it's turned off. So that's the way this one is. So I'll install that back in here. Okay, and then the outlet, I like putting the ground down. There's lots of debate about whether the ground goes up or down. I like putting it down because then you can say, you ground down. <laughs> kind of rhymes. I guess if you do some research, uh, there's no, there's nothing in the electrical code that says whether the ground should go down or up. Some people like to put it up because the way this is right now, if the plug were to come out a little bit, then if something were to fall in the top, and usually outlets are down near the floor, uh, if the plug were to be sort of half into the outlet, something were to fall on that, you could get across both those conductors and it would be a short circuit. Whereas if the ground terminal was facing upwards, then it would deflect that uh, uh, material, whatever it might be, that object, away from the ground, from the two current carrying conductors and prevent the arcing in the short circuit. But uh, I don't know. I like you ground down. So that's why I put them in. I guess the important thing is, it's nice when they're all, like in your house, it's nice when they're all the same. <laughs> I'm not going to tighten that up real tight just yet, because I have this uh, switch plate cover to go on it. So you leave them loose so you can adjust them. See this switch has to go over a little bit. There you go, that looks pretty good right there. So now we can snug them down a little. You know, you don't have to be right savage when you're tightening the outlets in the box, just as long as they're snug and, and don't move around. All right, that looks pretty good. Turn my switch on to hold the, the plate in place. Another thing I like to do too, just I like to put the screws so that they're vertical. <laughs> so you go till it's just a little tight and make it vertical.
All right, so I plugged in the, the other end of the cord, so we should have power on this now, although it's switched off right now. But I had my handy dandy voltage tester from Tessman. If you want to check that out, I've got a video. I'll put a link in this corner to that video if you want to go watch it. Anyway, let's see if we got power. Uh, nothing. We have power on our cable. You can't see that. I don't know whether you heard it, but it is blinking that way of power. So we turn it on. This outlet should be not powered, by the way. So we turn this on. Now that's what I'm talking about, baby. All right. So now just to test it with a kind of a load, I've got my, uh, my battery charger here. It's a battery charger maintainer. Smart charger, too, by the way. Anyway, let's plug her in. Uh, there's no polarized terminals on this plug, so you can plug it in whichever way you want. There we go. The display lights up. The outlet works. My charger works. So I'll just put this up here out of the way for now. Hopefully I won't need that for a while. And uh, we'll just leave that switch off till I need it. Well, I got to say, it's nice to get electricity back in the temporary shelter. Even though the way I put the electricity out there running that extension cord on grade, like that's by no means is that method recommended. Uh, like I'm not an expert. This is not a how-to channel. This is just Grampy's workshop doing jobs around the shop here. So I ran the extension cord on grade. Uh, it's like I say, it's nice to get electricity back in the shelter because I need that for the battery charger for the for the tractor in the winter time, especially. So and winter time is not far away. So I'm glad that's done. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget thumbs up me. Uh, it's always nice if you give me a thumbs up. It makes me feel good. And comments are always welcome at Grampy's workshop. Take care, folks. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.